Hello, my name is Dr. Jessica McElveen, and I'm the Director of the Office of Scientific Review at the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health, or NCCIH. Today, I'm happy to present you with some tips for making sure your application is reviewed after it is submitted. First of all, in order to proceed from receipt to the first level of peer review, applications must be complete, compliant, and responsive. But what do these different aspects mean? First, in order to be complete, the application must include everything that the Notice of Funding Opportunity, or NOFO, specifies should be included. In order to be compliant, the application must meet all of the requirements of the NOFO. And finally, a responsive application is one that proposes research to address the objectives outlined in the NOFO. So as I mentioned, applications must be complete, compliant, and responsive in order to proceed to the first level of peer review. If your application does not meet one or more of these aspects, it could be withdrawn without review, which is an outcome you don't want to have happen after all your hard work preparing your application. So let's go over how applicants can ensure that their application meets all of these important aspects. First of all, I highly recommend reviewing the SF-424 and related submission guidance. There are general instructions for submitting any application, as well as mechanism-specific guidance, depending on whether you're submitting, for example, a research project grant application, a fellowship, or a career development application. Next, it's important to pay attention to completeness indicators in the NOFO. Look for phrases such as must have or required or would be considered incomplete without. Section 4 of the NOFO may also specify other attachments under the SF-424 Other Project Information section that are required in order for the application to be considered complete. Per a recent change in policy, all applicants planning research to generate scientific data are now required to submit a data management and sharing plan as an other plans attachment. And finally, if you're proposing research that involves human subjects research, clinical research, and or an NIH-defined clinical trial, then you must include the PHS human subjects and clinical trials information as instructed in the SF-424 and the NOFO itself. Notably, some NOFOs may also require other clinical trial-related attachments in Section 5 that must be included to be complete. Now let's talk about compliance. Sections 2, 3, and 4 all contain important information on the requirements of the NOFO. For example, Section 2 includes what type of funding instrument will be used to support awards made from the NOFO, such as a grant, a cooperative agreement, which includes government involvement, or a contract, the application types allowed, such as new, resubmission, renewal, et cetera, whether clinical trials are allowed or required, and any stipulations regarding the budget and project period, such as maximum direct costs allowed and or maximum project period performance periods. Section 3 includes information on who may apply, such as whether or how foreign organizations are eligible to apply. And finally, Section 4 provides instructions on submitting your application, such as the page limitations, the PHS human subjects and clinical trials information, and allowable post-submission materials. Finally, in order to submit a responsive application, it is incredibly important to read through Section 1 of the NOFO which describes the overall objective of the NOFO and will often include important requirements or items that must or need to be addressed in the application. Section 1 may also include a section delineating the scope and or listing factors that would cause the application to be considered non-responsive to the NOFO. So now that you've heard how to ensure you submit a complete, compliant, and responsive application, I would like to leave you with a few final tips to help your application also do well once it proceeds to peer review. First, keep in mind that reviewers are asked to address what applicants are instructed to include in their applications. NOFO-specific language is also often added to the standard review criteria in Section 5 of the NOFO. 
Therefore, it's important to address how your application would be impactful considering the goals of the NOFO and to also read and take into consideration how reviewers will evaluate your application when preparing it. Here is information on how to connect with us if you have any questions or how to learn more about the NCCIH. And with that, I hope that you found this information helpful today, and we look forward to receiving your complete, compliant, and responsive applications in the future.